Walking sim is considered an insult for games that have little by way of interactivity. However, as time has passed, walking sims have formed their own unique adventure genre, focusing more on storytelling, characters, and unique settings. So let's take a look at 14 games that were surprisingly good walking simulators. Layers of Fear Though not the most innovative horror game by any means, Bloober Team's Layers of Fear was significant. Following the studio's failure with Basement Crawl, Layers of Fear presented a complete shift with its mature storyline and macabre atmosphere. As such, the game showcased Unity's power in twisted settings with excellent fidelity, creating disturbing sights at a decent clip. Death Stranding Kojima Productions' Death Stranding is laden with systems upon systems, not to mention a story that only truly starts to progress from Chapter 4 onwards. Nevertheless, the core tenets of the game's traversal are pleasant. Even as you trudge along a snow-filled landscape, packages stacked high, the gentle tunes of low roar, and stunning visuals offer an almost meditative experience. If nothing else, Death Stranding provides those moments of lonely calm, even as an entire story awaits. What Remains of Edith Finch What Remains of Edith Finch spins a memorable yarn focused on reliving different memories. While each offers their own unique gameplay style, the core loop is still centered around exploring the Finch household. Edith's own narration, coupled with a dreamy mood, helps to craft an almost whimsical experience, despite the encompassing themes of death. It's short, but What Remains of Edith Finch is still one of the best walking simulators out there. Firewatch Aside from the somewhat odd ending, Firewatch bolsters its exploration with a strong core mechanic. As a fire lookout named Henry, the player is constantly in touch with another lookout named Delilah. What starts out as a mystery eventually becomes a somber tale of looking inward and living with one's past. It's a slow burn, but the conversations and sheer mystery help keep it all going. The Stanley Parable Stanley didn't always have it so rough, he just liked pressing buttons. One day, Stanley was told by a narrator what to do and where to go. Unfortunately, it's the player in control of Stanley, and they can do whatever they want. The Stanley Parable is many things, but above all, it's a meta-commentary on the walking simulator as we may know it. What happens when you go outside the story? Are you really free from it, from anything? Of course, it doesn't hurt that the whole tale is really funny. Gone Home Considered the game that started it all, the Fulbright Company's Gone Home is both acclaimed and controversial. On the one hand, Katie Greenbrier's story as she explores her house attempting to piece together events that transpired was considered revolutionary. On the other hand, some found the narrative wanting and questioned the actual gameplay on offer. For better or worse, Gone Home spurred a new way to tell stories in adventure games and remains a pinnacle achievement. Kentucky Route Zero A magical realist story, Cardboard Computer's Kentucky Route Zero is beautifully odd. Though marketed as a point-and-click adventure, the story of truck driver Conway's journey on the Route Zero is more about the conversations and interactions with its people than anything else. It may be little more than going from one point to another, but as many walking sims have exemplified, there's a lot of magic that can happen in between. Oxenfree Night School Studio recognized that Oxenfree, a side-scrolling adventure game about the mysteries of a supernatural island, was simply about walking around. So, along with an interesting aesthetic and setting, it focused more on the characters. Protagonist Alex's interactions with them played out over lengthy conversations. Some choices would even radically alter the story. Oxenfree felt moody but far from downbeat, and carved its own niche in a burgeoning genre. The Vanishing of Ethan Carter a big departure from the developer's past work on first-person shooters, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter takes place in the open world of Red Creed Valley. As investigator Paul Prospero, who ventures to the valley after receiving a letter from a boy named Ethan Carter, the player is beset by paranormal occurrences. By exploring different stories and restoring scenes to witness a person's death, the full picture is unexpected, but worth experiencing. Pick up the Redux version because it features better visuals and a more intuitive autosave system. Tacoma From the same developer as Gone Home, Tacoma follows a somewhat different pattern to its exploration-based predecessor. Players explore the abandoned Tacoma space station, piecing together the events that took place based on AR recordings and conversations. 
This could involve playing back recordings and following characters as they move through different locations and present new clues. The atmosphere, writing, and characterization give Tacoma much of its heart, presenting an intriguing mystery. Everybody's Gone to the Rapture The Chinese room's Everybody's Gone to the Rapture is all about mystery. It takes place in a small village in England whose citizens have suddenly disappeared. By exploring the surroundings and listening to various recordings and conversations, the player learns what has beset the village. The answer may or may not satisfy you, but Everybody's Gone to the Rapture has an interesting story to tell with a compelling atmosphere and soundtrack to match. Soma For all intents and purposes, Soma is a first-person survival horror game where you sneak past horrendous machines. However, it's also a game centered on, you guessed it, mystery, as Simon Jarrett finds himself in the underwater lab of Pathos 2. Without any memory of how he got there or what's going on, it falls on the player to explore and uncover various aspects of the lab to decide Simon's fate. If you want to play it like a true walking sim, simply turn on safe mode, which prevents any monsters from killing the player and focuses primarily on the story. Dear Esther, the Chinese Room's first game was actually a free-to-play mod for the Source engine called Dear Esther. The narrative is about a man exploring an island and reading letters from his wife, Esther. The term art game has been applied because much of the narrative is left up to the player's interpretation. Still, as an early example of what the genre could achieve, Dear Esther is an essential play. The Long Dark Hinterland Studios' The Long Dark is an episodic survival title where players must manage their temperature, fatigue, and other elements while crash landing in the frigid wilds of Canada. While there are modes to reinforce the harsh survival elements, one can also go for more exploration-heavy game modes, turning the game into a proper narrative adventure. It may be worth your while too, The Long Dark's stark atmosphere and isolated setting makes for an endearing journey. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.